and I'm not being partisan about it because John Cortesign also skipped payments he should have made when he was governor. Um, the, I'm just picking these facts for illustrative purposes. New York City has an unfunded liability of $85 billion for the health care of their current and retired city employees. $85 billion and it's totally unfunded. State of New York has an unfunded health care liability for its employees of close to $70 billion. The state of New York owes the Federal Unemployment Insurance Fund, um, I, I, the last time I looked, about $900 million. Um, the amount of money spent on infrastructure is not, by anyone's standard, is not kept pace with the needs. And because depreciation is not an expense in government accounting systems, uh, there is no way of measuring in any precise way as one would have in business or if one owned a piece of real estate, you know what the depreciation of the building is. I don't mean for tax purposes, I mean actual uh, depreciation because Buildings are like us, they, they don't last forever. Um, the um, unfunded health care liabilities of all the cities in the United States now exceed $700 billion. Studies about the underfunding of pension systems indicate that they collectively, the public pension funds of the United States could be un underfunded by as much as, as $4 trillion. Um, I don't have to tell you all that we also have significant deficits at the federal level and the amount of debt that the United States is accreting every year is, is very, very worrisome uh, from the point of view of the ultimate impact on the interest rate that we're going to have to pay to continue to borrow money from China. But you look at some of these proposals to address them, whether it's Paul Ryan on the one hand, or Erskine Bowles, who's a Democrat on the other, and you look carefully at their recommendations. Uh, nobody is measuring the consequences on state and local budgets. And so, for example, both plans, and I'll just pick these two at random, there are a lot of other plans, uh, <coughs> would block grant Medicaid and cap it. So in other words, if the federal government gives X dollars to a state this year, they give it next year and be presumably under these proposals less involved in the details. They just hand the state the money. Um, problem with that for a state like New York is that uh, it, <laughs> that if you want to continue the level of benefits and the, and the definition of eligibility that you have presently, then you know your costs are going to go up and that means it's going to have a dramatic impact on the expenditure side of the state budget. Um, if you look at it another way and say, well, the state's going to cut way back, then that means that a lot of people who are currently getting the benefits of Medicaid won't get them. Which has potential social implications. If you do, as both plans do, eliminate the deductibility of state and local taxes, um, what I have no doubt will happen is that the number of people whose tax obligations will go way up, the pressure will build politically to reduce tax rates in order to compensate for the fact that you can no longer deduct for federal tax purposes your state and local taxes. Um, and 
I could go on and on. The, the scary thing to me is that I have yet to find any serious person in Washington who is, I could stop there, but, uh, <laughs> but who is paying any attention to this state and local problem. And, and there is a disconnect between what's going on in Washington and what's going on at the state level. And I would respectfully tell you all that this is a very important issue for you all because the, oh, thank you so much. My wife tells me every night that not only are women uh, smarter and smarter, but they're running more and more things in the world and getting more and more involved in politics. And, um, and it's important that you understand this because it's an important message. There are almost no members of Congress whose election or re-election in any way depends on what happens in state capitals and state budgets. So if New York State taxes have to go up dramatically, or if services have to be cut dramatically, or uh, bridges have to be shut down, uh, uh, nobody's going to blame the members of Congress. They're going to blame a governor or mayors or state legislatures. <laughs> I remember having lunch with a group of Congress people from New York, all of our people I've known for a long time, and when I ate, they told me they were going to vote for something that was important for New York State. And they said, you know, we're doing it because uh, the Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, is cracking the whip and because the White House is cracking the whip. But we're getting tired of voting for more deficit spending in Washington to bail out a bunch of politicians in Albany that don't have the guts to tax or cut and solve their own problems. And then last year I was the speaker at the annual meeting of the Westchester Mayors Association. And they were all, it was the week that the legislature was passing the property tax cap, which is a very popular thing, as you know, amongst the public. And we do have incredibly high property taxes. But the mayors were going crazy, unanimous, because that's the only tax they have the power to generate revenue from without going to Albany and getting permission to have a sales tax or anything else. And uh, and this disconnect is very, very distressing. It raises the fundamental question as to whether or not our whole federal system doesn't have to be re-examined. And I, I'd just like to sort of wind this up before I open it up to questions by telling you what I think are, are, are two interesting things. One, in uh, Richard Nixon's administration, um, there were two people in the White House, Pat Moynihan, whom you remember, I'm sure, as the United States Senator. Uh, but he worked as the domestic policy advisor for Richard Nixon. And a fellow by the name of Richard Nathan, who was an academic and a scholar. And they convinced President Nixon that the federal government was a far more efficient revenue raiser than local governments were, but that local governments were far more efficient in administering public services. So in the Nixon administration, there was committed, created a commission on intergovernmental relations. And there was a revenue sharing formula for the state. Um, Pat Moynihan never thought New York got a fair share of that. Uh, that was his job. And he came to realize that that was James Madison's fault because there were as many senators from Mississippi as there were from New York State. But, um, but nonetheless, for a number of years, there was a general revenue sharing 
problem. It was an item in the federal budget revenue sharing. The money was a portion of the states, and the states could use it. And it was a recognition of the fact that, in, in many ways, of the fundamental fact that under our constitutional system, states are responsible for the public safety, for education, for health care in the regulatory sense, if not in the financial sense, for public infrastructure. About 85 percent of all of the public infrastructure in the United States is supported or paid for by states or instrumentalities of states like the Port Authority or the uh, Thruway Authority or whatever. Um, a recognition of that. But unfortunately, that program sort of evanesced. And it evanesced because there was no single constituency that had enough interest in it uh, to constitute a, a political lobby that uh, um, beat up on the Congress to continue it. So it sort of died over 15 years. Um, now, in light of the disconnect that I just described, it is important for people who are involved in politics in, in the way that you, your organization is, is to try to make politicians recognize that we have to re-examine what are the responsibilities of states, what are the responsibilities of cities, and what is the responsibility of the federal government, both with respect to funding them and administering uh, these programs. And I know that sounds very abstract, but in all, with all respect, it isn't. It's a very, very real issue. Let me remind you how Medicaid came to pass. Uh, in 1965, Lyndon Johnson, um, who believed passionately in the government providing health care for the elderly, uh, had a proposal called Medicare, in which the federal government was going to pay for hospitalization and, and uh, surgery and medical treatment for anybody over the age of 65. He got persuaded to add to the Medicare bill something called Medicaid. And it was viewed as an adjunct to the poverty program, and it was administered uh, throughout the country by states, by the same agencies that administered welfare programs. It was not a part of health care at all. It was estimated in 1965, when it was enacted, to cost the federal government no more than $7 billion a year. Uh, it's now about $350. Um, and, um, roughly the same amount being spent by states. Um, every state can determine eligibility. There are certain minimums that the federal statute requires. Uh, so there's an enormous variation from state to state. Um, and uh, of Medicaid. So there are enormous differentials in both the nature of the care and the quality of the care that are available to people, uh, depending which side of the state line you live on. Um, as this country is going to go through another debate on uh, health care, and should we have universal health care, we read all about the Obama health care plan, which would take everybody who's currently not insured and make sure they're insured. I'm not commenting as to whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. That's a separate question. But it, it should be, it's going to be re-debated because the money has to be appropriated. Um, and <clears throat> one has to examine really whether health care should be a federal responsibility or a combined federal and state responsibility, et cetera. I don't mean to dwell on that, but I, I really think that so few people think about how, how severe this disconnect is. So when you talk to your congressman or congresswoman who's running for re-election this fall, um, ask them about uh, um, the state and local issues. 